this video lecture is on how to create loops. So sometimes you're just going to be given a problem. You have to come up with the solution. So how do you determine the control variable and the condition if nothing's been done for you, just an explanation or a description? So the first step in creating a loop is just to read through the problem and identify important keywords. This is what you would do for any word problem, and doing a problem in programming is no different. So you might want to highlight a few things, anything that really stands out to you, just like any word problem. Then you're going to identify the type of loop needed. So is it a definite loop, a loop with a sentinel, a loop with a target value, or a loop where you keep asking if you want to continue? Now I'm not going to do any examples with this last one because we've done a couple already and they're fairly straightforward, but we're going to talk about each of the other three. How do you know which one it is and then how do you to develop the condition? So step two then is decide on your control variable and decide on the condition. These are some things you're going to look for. When you're reading the description, does it say while or does it say until? If you see the word until, you're going to do the opposite. You have to decide, do I use equals or not? So is it less than or less than or equal to? Is it greater than or greater than or equal to? Equals or not equals? These are all the decisions that you have to make when you're doing your word problem. So let's look at some examples. Here's the first one. Write a while loop that prints the squares of 10 numbers starting at 1. So what are some words that you might identify? Here we've got 10 numbers. We've got a starting number and we're going to be printing some stuff. We don't really care what the loop does, we just want to care about the other things. So it's a while loop that's going to start, that's going to do 10 numbers. Now if we know in advance how many numbers it's going to do, that is a definite loop. It's count control. This also is going to help us with the control variable. The control variable is going to be count because it's a count control. And when is it going to stop? Well I'm not going to say 10 because I'm starting at 1 and this last number is never included. So if count is less than 11, that's going to get me up to 10. So this is where you have to kind of think about, or I could have said count less than or equal to 10. So that would have been fine as well. So less than 11 or less than or equal to 10. And this is what the loop would actually look like. Now remember, you're not really going to be held accountable for the inside part right now, but can you identify the condition and the control variable? And the control variable needs to be uh, initialized. Let's take a look at example B. Create a while loop that asks the user for a number until finished with the numbers. Use zero to exit. Well, that's kind of a clue right there that you're going to have a sentinel. So it's an indefinite loop with a sentinel. Now these are fairly straightforward. You know that your control variable is going to be some number, whatever the person is entering, and you're going to stop when you reach the sentinel. So I could put not equals to zero, or I could put greater than zero, depending if they're all going to be positive. So this is what it might look like. You've done several of these. Something's happening in the loop, so I'll just put it in brackets, but here's the main part right here. Okay, sample C. Ask the user for an ending value. Then create a while loop that prints all multiples of three, starting at one, until the total of the multiples reaches the ending value. Now there's a lot going on in here, but just like any math word problem, you throw out the stuff that doesn't really mean anything. You're gonna look for the ends. So we have an ending value. Do we know when we start? Printing out multiple, so I'm going to start at 0 or 1. I'm going to go until a total. So I've got some clues in there right then. Do I know how many times it's going to take for the total to get to the ending value? No. So it is an indefinite loop, and I've got a target value. My control variable is not going to be count. It's going to be total. So my condition is total less than the ending value. Could it be less than or equal to? Well, let's see the words right here. We've got until. So I'm going to do the opposite. Until the total reaches the ending value. So total is greater than or equal to the ending value. I'm doing the opposite, and that's where I get less than. And the loop would look something like this. So now we're going to do some practice. You're going to find in your notes that there are five practice problems. I want you to go ahead and stop the video, try them out on your own. Can you identify what type of loop it is, the control variable, and the condition? Give it a try and then come back here for the solutions. Problem number one. 
Create a loop that continues until the total is more than 500. Now notice we've got the keyword total and we've got an ending value, my target. So this is an indefinite loop with a target value. The control variable is total and the condition is less than or equal to 400. How did I know? I've got the word until. It's more than, so I'm going to do the opposite, less than or equal to. Now this is what you are responsible for, but here is an example of what it might look like. Problem number two. Create a while loop that prints the multiples of three up to and including an ending value. Okay, so a loop that prints the multiples, I'm going to start at zero or one. I've got an ending value. So it's, an in, it's a definite, it's a count control. I know I'm going to go from one to the ending value. So my control variable is count. My condition is count less than or equal to less than end value plus one. Why the plus one? Because I want to include it. Or I could have said count is less than or equal to end value. That would work as well. So you weren't responsible for this, but if you wanted to give it a try, this is a possible solution. Problem number three. Create a loop that continues until all numbers are entered using 10 to quit. This is a clear indication that you have a sentinel. So the type of loop is indefinite with sentinel. The control variable is going to be that number this, the user is entering, and the condition is going to be as long as the number is not the sentinel. And a possible solution. Doing something in here. Now in our last video lecture, we learned about priming read and modification read. So you could redo the solution without having this right here. You could redo it with a priming read and a modification read, and that would look a little bit better. Problem number four. Create a while loop that asks the user for a number and adds it to a total. Continue until the total is divisible by nine. We've got total, we've got some kind of target value, so this is an indefinite with a target value. The control variable is going to be total, and the condition is a little bit weird here. Total uh, divisible by nine, so we're looking at the remainder, as long as the remainder is not zero. Okay, well how come not? Because I'm going to continue until. You see the word until? I'm going to do the opposite. So until it is divisible, and I want it not divisible. And here's a possible solution. Okay, problem number five. Write a while loop that computes all odd numbers between A and B, including B. Do we know in advance? Well, once I know A and once I know B, I do know how many times this loop is going to execute. So, this is a definite or count control. My control variable would be count. Now, it could be A. I'm just going to show you one solution to kind of streamline it. So, if it's a definite loop, we're just going to say count. And the condition would be count less than or equal to B. Why less than or equal to B? Because it says include. So here's the solution. I've got A, the starting value, B, the ending value. I'm going to have a total, and I've just started count at A. I've got my condition, and then I just want to see if it's odd, I add it to the total. If it's not odd, I don't believe it. So this isn't the only solution, but this is one that kind of fits. So take a look at this video lecture again if you need to. Go through, write down questions that you might have. And for, in class on Wednesday, you're going to get into small groups and you're going to complete a worksheet on creating loops. So we're going to have more practice, more practice, more practice.